Thanks for joining me again as we look back at another great classic film. This is a thriller with a difference from a director who made his name in the genre. It is his first feature film and the last to be made in his native Poland, using avant-garde black and white cinematography and taut storytelling that keeps you on the edge of your seat. It is Knife in the Water from 1962. Romuk Polanski's first feature-length film involved a difficult period of screenplay development that likely contributed to his move overseas. The initial script written by Polanski, Jacob Goldberg and Jerzy Skolomowski was rejected by the Polish Ministry of Culture due to its lack of social commitment. They attempted a rewrite setting it in France to appeal to foreign production companies but this also failed. So further minor edits, mainly snippets of dialogue demonstrating social commitment, were made to appease the Ministry of Culture and as a result they received production approval from the Polish National Film Board. The film included only three main roles. Screenwriter Jerzy Skolomowski was interested in playing the young hitchhiker's part, a role Polanski had intended to play himself. But Jerzy Bozak, uh, head of the Polish film unit Camera, under whose auspices the film was made, vetoed the decision because he didn't consider the director attractive enough. The role went to Zygmunt Mal Malanowicz, uh, who was more attractive but had virtually no professional acting experience and had a strong developed bass voice which was inappropriate for the character. So the voice was dubbed by Polanski. The other central role of Christina went to Yolanta uh, Umeka, who was equally inexperienced. Most of the filming took place on water in the Polish Masurian Lake District and largely within the confines of a sailboat and a life raft. This was technically difficult. While the sailboat was large enough uh, for the three actors, it was difficult to also accommodate the crew, who often had to hang over the side of the boat with safety harnesses while shooting. During one of the top mast shots, cameraman Jersey Lippmann was tied to the mast while filming. The combined weight of the cameraman and camera caused the mast to swing, making a good shot difficult. Polanski was excited about this shot and kept asking Lippmann how it was going. Out of frustration, Lippmann said, it is fucking beautiful, before dropping the camera, which sank and likely still lies at the bottom of the lake. It's believed that the boat used during the shoot had been the property of Hermann Goring, who used to uh, spend summer holidays in the palace at Sitnort, uh, which was close to the film's locations. The real name of the boat is Reckon, which uh, quite appropriately translates to the shark. The opening scene was shot with the crew tied to the front of the, uh, the car, holding a blanket with a small hole for the camera to achieve the desired lighting effect. Leon Nipzitz, uh, who plays Andre, uh, was driving at speed, something crucial for the scene, but as he couldn't see the road, he had to use the tops of the trees as a guide, and thankfully there wasn't an accident. This is different to other thrillers, frequently promising but never descending into violence, and its conclusion is one of cold, considered calmness, which results in the inaction that likely uh, means death for the film's villain. Released theatrically in Poland in March of 1962 and then the United States in October of 63, it became the first Polish film to be nominated for Best Foreign Language Film at the 63 Academy Awards. It won the Fapresi Prize in 1962 at Venice. It's considered one of the best debut feature films of all time and was ranked number 61 in Empire Magazine's The Best 100 Films of World Cinema. In 2014, Martin Scorsese selected for his film festival Martin Scorsese Presents Masterpieces of Polish Cinema. In 2015, the Polish Museum of Cinematography ranked Knife in the Water as the fourth greatest Polish film of all time. Along with Cul-de-sac in 66 and Death and the Maiden in 1994, the film forms part of a loose trilogy that features a couple whose lives are turned upside down by an outside character. The cover of Time magazine uh, in September 20 of 1963 uh, featured a still from this film uh, with the cover story about international cinema. Mick Jagger first saw the film in a film club at university and it remains one of his favourite movies. Polanski was offered funding for an English language colour remake with a Hollywood cast including Henry Fonda but refused as he didn't want to remake a movie that was already good. So lots of good reasons to watch this film. It's a tense and taut thriller, well acted by all, beautifully shot in black and white, using some very interesting camera angles, which in the end leaves you wondering whether things turned out badly or very badly. So what I'd suggest you do is that you go to our website, find our virtual screenings page, find the link to this particular film, definitely click on and watch it. Uh, I'm sure you'll enjoy it, uh, but as always, we'd invite you to come back, uh, let, let us know your thoughts about the film and whether you'd recommend it for others as well. And then we're back in the not too distant future for our next classic films review. See you next time.